Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane and Hurricane HD video blog for Wednesday, the 17th of October 2012. Taking a look at this current 10-day time period that we're moving through the 11th through the 20th, we see clearly that the majority of the development this time of year takes place right here in the Western Caribbean. Then you have a much larger, more sparsely populated cluster over a much larger geographic region out over the central to western Atlantic and the eastern Pacific stays pretty busy even this time of year and we've seen that recently here with Hurricane Paul that affected the Baja yesterday and is now leaving the area today but this is the region that we're going to be watching here for the next chance of development and it, it's climatologically favored I've been talking about this for a while we have this favorable MJO pulse coming through We'll take a look at all of that in just a moment. First, here is Hurricane Raphael. It has a beautiful tail on the end of it here, almost like a frontal boundary. Uh, it looks more like a really well-developed nor'easter. You know, if you planted this back over the northeast here um, in January, that would be a heck of a snowstorm, wouldn't it? But it's not. It's still a fairly warm core system. However, it is transitioning as we speak here uh, with this dry cooler slug of air coming in trying to work its way towards the core and diminish that upward motion spreading the energy out over a larger area and thus it transitions to extratropical from being a warm core fairly tightly wound up with its wind field tropical system in the eastern Pacific the only item of note is the leftovers here of what was Hurricane Paul that disturbance the low pressure uh, remnants will move off to the northwest away from the Baja and there's nothing else brewing at the time in the eastern Pacific. Now looking at that MJO pulse here is where we are right now and it is in phase one which is typically starting to be more favorable for development in the western hemisphere. Now this doesn't guarantee development but this is like an added benefit. It helps to sort of take that cap off um, it enhances the upward motion in the atmosphere, uh, promoting tropical convection when you see the Madden-Julian oscillation come around here into phases one and two. And this is the ECMWF representation of it in the forecast for the next couple of weeks, remaining favorable for the Atlantic Basin. Will anything come of it? Well, if we look at a nice hemispheric shot here, there's a little bit of convection here, some out here along the intertropical convergence zone in the eastern Pacific, but not much to speak of at all in the Western Caribbean or anywhere in the Caribbean Sea, in fact. So we still don't really see the telltale signs of that uh, Madden-Julian oscillation, what we call the wet phase of it, quite into the Caribbean just yet. Maybe in the next few days we will see that. And in fact, the global models, looking at the GFS in particular, this is a week from now, uh, we should start to expect in the next week to see an increase in that convection over the southwest and western Caribbean Sea, also in the eastern Pacific. I think one key thing here to look at, if whatever this is that tries to develop in the extreme southeast Pacific, uh, to the south of Guatemala and that region to the uh, due south of Mexico, southeast Mexico, if this takes over and becomes dominant, it might rob the energy from what's going on on the other side of the landmass in the Western Caribbean. So we'll wait and see how that works out. This is day eight, and we see a marked increase in shower and thunderstorm activity in the Caribbean. And then this system starts to ramp up south of uh, Mexico. And like I said, we'll have to wait and see which one becomes the dominant system. It's hard to have two competing tropical cyclones within fairly close proximity to each other they tend to hurt each other. Finally at day nine we see just the edge here of this system in the southeast Pacific moving off to the west northwest perhaps and then broad low pressure in the Caribbean Sea nothing really intense nothing very well organized even by day 10 but I tell you what this is a pretty powerful mid-latitude system bringing yet another shot of cold fall air down into the United States so the clock is about to run out on the hurricane season at least for the potential for impacts to the United States certainly we still have to watch the Caribbean this time of year and through November 
because you can get development down there, but it's really difficult to get something to come north of any consequence into the Gulf or the Atlantic side to affect the U.S. once we get past the midpoint of October. Those chances really start to go down. So that's a look at the tropics for today. Again, I'm Mark Suddeth. HurricaneTrack.com is my website. Always a privilege and a pleasure to produce these videos for Hurricane and Hurricane HD. I'll be back to do it again for you tomorrow.